Okay. Hello from beautiful Park City, Utah. Uh, ringing in the new year, 2020, uh, and wanted to answer a few questions. Now, every state is going to have their own specific mechanisms of, of how they treat out-of-state transfers, okay? Um, but they're pretty much going to be similar to how I'm going to explain it, but you're going to need to sort of just double check on this depending on where you live. Uh, because there's a lot of states, um, well, let's say there are some states that, uh, you know, paying for a, a private placement just isn't that big of a deal, uh, and they do it a lot, okay? Like Illinois, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, California, places like that. But let's say that, that you live in California and you have uh, an individual education service plan to where your child's going to a private school, uh, but the public school that your child's zoned for had a, had a heavy hand um, in helping develop that IEP for the private placement um, evaluations and that they had some kind of funding mechanism to help support that, uh, that placement. Well, at that point, Yes, and let's say you move to, well, I'm not going to pick on a state, Let, let's say Alabama, okay, because uh, I have an office there and, and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not going to pick on anybody else, but let's say you take that IEP, you move to Alabama, and at that point, the school system is required to, you'd have to enroll your child, all right, uh, that service plan um, the school would be required to follow it to a comparable level. Now, that's going to be the caveat. What does that mean? And if it is an IEP at a private placement, uh, then they're going to try to do their best within the confines of, of the things that they can do. And that's the comparable aspect. Um, are they required to pay for a private placement? No, they're not. I mean, they, they're going to have what they're required to do is, you know, just recognize that your child is one with a qualifying disability and in need of specialized instruction. That saves the time of not putting your child through the initial eligibility all over again and free floating them. Now, at the same time, because each state has their own minimal requirements to qualify for an IEP, then yes, your child would need to go through. Uh, the eligibility process again, but but what I'm saying is your child's not going to be free floated without a plan, um, you know. And at that point, that's where I'm saying the comparable services during that time frame of them evaluating would need to happen. But by and large, uh, it would it would need to happen within the public uh, education uh, setting, uh, the school setting, unless you were able to negotiate something different. Uh, more than likely, they would want to jump on having you sign consent uh, on the on the day one in order for them to start the evaluation process in order for them to check off their boxes that your child does in fact um, qualify for an IEP according to the minimal uh, evaluative standards for Alabama and at that point then if your child uh, was found eligible in Alabama, then you would have to have an IEP meeting to develop an IEP specific for your new state. Or in this case, in my example, it would be Alabama. You wouldn't necessarily be entitled to um, another private placement or, or anything similar to that. Uh, not when you move, okay? Uh, there's just some you know, base rights to where you don't have to sit there and start over uh, but at the same time you know just understand the give and take there uh, you have your base rights of what the school system is required to do or what the state's required to do um, and comparable is an ambiguous term and especially if you're coming from a private placement with public intervention or, or handling uh, you know what would comparable mean according to that standard and uh you know at that point does that i've had i've had more than a few cases where um one in particular the family moved from connecticut to alabama and they had a wonderful um transition iep out of connecticut and you know 
Alabama's response was, we don't do that. And then I had to file a due process complaint, um, and you know, this, we won, and uh, had to go all the way to hearing with a decision. And the hearing officer awarded uh, compensatory services to my client um, for them not providing comparable services and not acknowledging uh, the IEP and how it was structured coming in from Connecticut. So yes, you can do that, but sometimes, just always keep in mind, sometimes you're going to have to fight for it, um, depending on what that IEP or that service plan that you're transferring in looks like and what, what, uh, what the composition is. But with regards to getting your consent to do the evaluation process for that individual state, that's going to be the same in, in almost every state unless they have a mechanism that they'll just accept uh, an out-of-state evaluation um, or a, an eligibility determination, and some states do that, uh, then at that point you would still have the IEP team for your new school uh, in the new state sit down and create a new IEP. Okay.